All right, today we are going to look at how, when given a, an equation, we can make a table and then graph it. So we've already been looking at constant rate of change and what the rate of, uh, constant rate of change is, the change in y over the change in x, and how we can relate that to a table, a graph and a table. But now we're actually going to practice graphing it. So the first thing we need to do is make a table with our x and y values. So we're going to use the equation and substitute values for x. And we want to graph at least three points, so it gives us a really good idea of how this line is going to look. And then we're going to connect the dots with a straight line. So this line is going to be continuous and go on and on and on forever, even though we might not see it exactly on the graph. So what's really important for us to remember is that when we use substitution, we're taking an x value or an input value, substituting it right there in this given equation. And then we are going to use order of operations for that. So if you look at these two equations, we're going to graph both of these equations on this graph and both of these equations on this graph and see what's happening. Now if you first look, these look almost alike, but this is a positive 2 as the coefficient and this is a negative 2. This is a positive 4 as the constant and a negative 4 as the constant. So we're going to look and see how those are going to be different. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this over here, and I'm going to use um, my separate sheet of paper to kind of substitute this in. So if I say y equals 2x plus 4, I'm going to take the 0 and plug it in where I see x. So y equals 2 groups of 0 plus 4. Order of operations, I'm going to multiply first. So 2 times 0 is 0, and I bring everything else down. And then 0 plus 4 is 4. So when my input is 0, and I multiply it by 2, and then add 4, my output is 4. So that's my ordered pair for that first one. So now I'm going to look for my ordered pair for when x is 1. So again, I always start with my equation. And my equation in this one is y equals 2x plus 4. Well, now my x, my input is different. It's 1. So y equals 2 times 1 plus 4. So in this equation, no matter what x is, you're going to multiply it by 2 first and then add 4 to get its y. So 2 groups of 1 or 2 times 1 is 2 and bring down the plus 4 and 2 plus 4 is 6. So that means when my input is 1, my output is 6. So when x is 1, y is 6. And then my last ordered pair for this one, y equals see, 2x plus 4. We always want to start with the equation. So y equals 2 groups of, now we're plugging in not just a 1, but a negative 1. So it's very important that you work step by step. If you try to do these all in your head, that's where you're going to get confused. So write the equation, substitute, and then solve with order of operations. So again, we're going to multiply first. A positive times a negative is a negative. And then you do the math like normal. 2 times 1 is 2. And then bring down the plus 4. Combining integers, if you have two negatives and you add four positives, you're going to create zero pairs and have two positives left over. Or you can think about when the signs are opposite, you subtract and you take the sign of who they're more of. So 4 minus 2 is 2, and there are more positives. So when my x is negative 1, my y is positive 2. So these are your ordered pairs. So I'm going to remember that x goes left to right and y goes up and down. So my ordered pair, when x is 0, y is 4. When x is 1, y is 6. When x is negative 1, y is 2. So we always start at the origin. And we need to make sure these are in groups of 1, 2, or 3, or whatever. They're all in groups of 1, so we're good. So when x is 0, I don't have to move left or right. But y is 4, so I go up to positive 4. Then I start back at the origin. So x is first. When x is 1, y is positive 6. So I graph right there. And then back at the origin again. The origin is where we always start. When x is negative 1, y is 2. And then if you have a ruler, you want to use that. If not, you can use like a side of a folder or spiral or something like that. You just want to make the, connect the dots and make it as straight line as possible. So that line represents this linear equation. 
that's represented by 2x plus 4. So linear is, looks like the word line. So this is the linear equation, and that's how we graph it. Okay, so now let's look at another one. So now we have y equals negative 2x minus 4. So I'm going to use a different color to represent that. Again, we're going to substitute our values in. So y equals negative 2x minus 4. So when x is 0, we're going to substitute that in, negative 2 times 0 minus 4. Well, negative 2 times 0, anything times 0, remember that's called zero product property, anything times 0 is 0. And 0 minus 4, a couple ways we can think about this, if you have 0, you can't take away 4 positives. So remember when we see subtraction, we add a line and change the next sign. So if you have 0 and you add 4 negatives, well now you have 4 negatives. Or if you were thought about it as 0 minus 4, remember you start at the origin, and if I went minus 4, that means 4 to the left, I would land at negative 4. So a couple different ways that we can think about that. So when x is 0, y is negative 4. So now I start with my equation again, y equals negative 2x minus 4, and now my x is changing. So this is why this is called a variable. It varies, it changes. So x is not always going to be 0, it's changing. So when x is 1, negative 2 times 1 minus 4. And when you're making your table, you can actually use any ordered pairs that you want. Um, what we just wanted to do is when x was 0, then we wanted to use a positive number and a negative number. So you can use whatever numbers you want with substitution unless otherwise noted that they want a specific value. So order of operations, we multiply first. Negative 2 times 1, positive times a negative is a negative. Do the math like normal. And then we bring down the minus 4. Well, remember, if I have two negatives, can you take away four positives? No, you cannot, because you only have two negatives. So that's why when we see subtraction, we add a line, change the next sign. So two negatives combined with four negatives is negative 6. So when my input is 1, my output is negative 6. Okay? So then let's try one more. Negative 2x minus 4. So when x is not 1, but negative 1, we're going to substitute that. And this is why it's really important for us to practice and remember those rules. Order of operations first, negative 2 times a negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive, and 2 times 1 is 2. So negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, and then we bring down the minus 4. Then if I have 2, I can't take away 4 positives, so we add a line, change the next sign. The signs are opposite, so we subtract. 4 minus 2 is 2, but there are more negatives, so it's going to be a negative 2. Again, you can create that with the picture and those zero pairs as well. Or think about the number line, going 2 to the right and then 4 to the left, you're going to land at negative 2. So now we have my ordered pairs for the second part. So when x is 0, y is negative 4. When x is 1, y is negative 6. When x is negative 1, y is negative 2. So we start at the origin, x is 0, so I'm not moving left or right. Remember, x is left to right. Y is vertical, up and down. So horizontal, vertical. Always have to go in that order. X is 0, Y is negative 4. Go back to origin when X is 1, Y is negative 6. And when X is negative 1, Y is negative 2. So now we're going to connect those dots. What I like to do is kind of put right there See where they all connect. Now later on we're going to get more in depth about how we can actually, in eighth grade we're going to see how you can actually graph these without substitution just yet, but we want to we want to get slowly but surely built into that. So a couple things that you notice, when you have a negative coefficient, your graph is going to be going down. When you have a positive coefficient, your graph is going to, your linear equation is going to be going up. And they actually do intersect. That means they have the same ordered pair when x is negative 2, y is 0. Again, we're going to build into that. 
All right, so let's try two more. So I appreciate your patience. I know this video is maybe a little bit longer, but we want to make sure that you can see what's happening in this, okay? All right, so let's practice again. So now I have the equation y equals negative 3x. So this is just multiplying. This is called a multiplicative relationship. So when x is 0, y is negative 3. And I actually have some space down here to substitute. So y equals negative 3x. So when x is 0, well, negative 3 times 0 is 0. Let's write my equation again. When x is 1, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And when x is negative 1, Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. So when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is negative 3. When x is negative 1, y is positive 3. So it's really important that you're showing your work on these because if you accidentally put a negative sign when it was really positive, it throws the whole graph off. So that's where we want to make sure we are practicing and showing our work. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we're going to graph when x is 0, y is 0. That means we're staying at the origin. When x is 1, y is negative 3. When x is negative 1, y is positive 3. Remember, x left to right, horizontal. y up and down, that's vertical. And then we're going to connect the dots. And I'm going to draw the arrows at the end of the line just to signify that this is going to continue on and on forever. So again, this was a negative coefficient, so that is going down because as your values of x increase, your y is actually decrease. Okay? I know it's increasing here and then it goes down, so as x's are increasing in value, your y's are going down. That's it called a negative, okay, with a negative coefficient. All right. This one looks a little difficult, so let's practice that. We know how to multiply with fractions, but really and truly, when you take half of something or you multiply one half, it's like you're dividing by two. So let's see, y equals one half x minus two. So y equals one half of zero minus two. Well, here again, anything times zero is zero, so that one's a little bit easier. If I have zero, I can't take away two because I have nothing. So when I see subtraction, I add a line, change the next sign. So if I have zero and I add two negatives, now I have two negatives. Okay, move these down a little bit. So y equals one half x minus two. Now there's a couple ways we're gonna do this, but I'm gonna review how to multiply with fractions. So y equals one half times four but remember, 4 is the same thing as 4 over 1. Because when we multiply by fractions, both numbers have to be fractions. So then we multiply straight across. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Bring everything else down. Well, this fraction, 4 divided by 2, is 2. Remember, a fraction bar just means to divide. And 2 minus 2, lastly, is 0. Another way you can think of this is when you take half of something, it's like you divide by 2. So if I put the 4 right there, half of 4 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. But I wanted to review how to multiply the fractions in case this was like 2 thirds or 3 eighths or something like that. All right, last one. I'll move over here so we have enough room. So y equals 1 half x minus 2. So y equals 1 half of 6, which is really 6 over 1. I'm going to go ahead and make that a fraction because when I multiply with fractions again, both numbers have to be fractions. Multiply fractions straight across. 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. And then bring down the minus 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 3 minus 2 is 1. If for some reason this didn't reduce down to a whole number, we could still um, subtract with fractions by making this 2 over 1 and then having a common denominator. But it ended up working to be a, a whole number on this one. So when x is 6, y is 1. So we have our ordered pairs. I didn't list them on this one, but I think we'll, we'll be okay. So x left to right, y is up and down. Like I listed them up here, 
but I didn't down here. So if it helps you out to list them, go for it. When x is 0, y is negative 2. When x is 4, y is 0, so I don't go up and down. When x is 6, y is 1. So then we're going to connect those. Draw my arrows at the end. So again, even though this is a fraction, it's a positive 1 half, so this is a and going in toward the positives. Let's go as my x's are increasing right here, my y's are in increasing as well. So we see that this is going to be going be called positive. Okay? So if your coefficient is positive, it's going to be going up. If your coefficient's negative, it should be going down. That will kind of help you to see if you're graphing it right. And we do see that they share an ordered pair right there. Uh, but we'd have to do a little bit more math to see what that is because it's a little bit when x is a little bit less than 1 and y is in between negative 1 and negative 2. So we'll teach you how to do that a little bit more toward 8th grade. Okay? So now you know how to graph the linear equations, so you're going to be practicing that today.